Mathieu Bosch from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of France and Aurélie Chevrillon from the French Development Agency. Thank you for doing this interview with us here today. The guide to due diligence of agribusiness projects that affect land and property rights was commissioned by you, the French Corporation, to help your partners and projects to implement the FAO voluntary guidelines, known as the VGGTs and endorsed in 2012. By when your projects have to start applying this guide? And what do you see as the biggest challenge for your projects and partners in having to do this now? Uh, so, thank you for the invitation. And I will um, say that your question brings us back to uh, why uh, the French Development Agency has uh, made it and why now. There was a strong political commitment to translate the rental guidelines into fact. So, um, therefore, the France, along with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, has decided to require its own public operators to respect the voluntary guidelines and to make the same demand of French companies involved in overseas projects that affect um, land holding. So, uh, to, to answer clearly to your question, I will say that more than a deadline, it is, uh, it is more the idea to continue uh, to raise awareness, in fact, internally, on land issue in uh, our headquarters, but also in our office uh, among the world. Uh, and on the parallel, it is true that we will start now, uh, in, in this year coming, uh, a work with our uh, environmental and social departments uh, um, into a process to standardize this guide and to um, make the recommendation for all uh, of our projects. Maybe I, I uh, forgot to add something now on the, on the previous challenges that, that we faced uh, when starting to use this guide. Actually, the first one I would say is uh, to overcome the vision that land issues are too political, too sensitive, and too complicated, too complex uh, to analyze and to include, include in, in, in our processes and in the due diligence analysis made by the French development agencies. It's really something important to, to raise, as already said, to raise awareness among our project officers, but, but also um, within our, our partners' offices, raise awareness about the fact that it's possible to work on these non-issues, even if it's complex. And maybe the, the, second, the second best, biggest challenge uh, would be in uh, involving our domestic uh, private sector and explain to them that it's on, in their own interest to use these guidelines, because um, it can, it can uh, increase maybe the cost uh, at, at the beginning of the project uh, to use these guidelines to make this analysis and this, this all um, uh, long governance land issues uh, analysis, but uh, on the long term it will be on their own interest to, to really apply um, this principle. The guide places a strong focus on the development of contracts, proposing a whole list of issues to be checked whether they are reflected in the contracts. But what about investments that are already running? How can donors ensure that these investments will generate equitable benefits for all, even when contracts have already been signed? It is true that the guide plays a strong focus on the contracts, um, as they say, uh, the devil is in the details. Uh, so, we do believe that contract determines the terms of the investment. Uh, any serious analysis of proposed project should include the scrutiny of the terms of the contract and the processes um, that have um, established them. So, uh, why a good contract is not guaranteed that the project will be properly implemented or all commitments or not, a bad contract on the other side will not create the conditions for a desirable project. It's true that uh, donors are, are always consulted uh, when the contract can be in process, so it's very rare that we are at the beginning of the deal. But I do believe that yes, things can be done in the, in the process, in the ongoing, and even after. Maybe you want to add something? Yeah, no, it's, it's very true. I mean, um, as we all know, our business projects are um, developed uh, on the long term. So, and most of the time, activities can evolve during the lifespan of the project. So, it's also an important thing of this of this guide is, as already uh, already said, is to to help stakeholders 
to ask the right questions at the right time. Mathieu, USAID is also preparing guidelines to help companies to adhere to the VGGT. And there is also OACD policy framework for investments in agriculture. What happens in case of multi-donor funding for the same projects? Which guide will prevail? Are you not perhaps creating different standards in complying with the VGGT? Yeah, you're right, Romy, actually. There's, there are different guidelines, uh, actually, that have been developed or that are in the process of being developed, um, and they use sometimes different approaches. I think there's, there's, no, there's no risk of, uh, uh, of creating different standards in, in complying with these VGs, this because all these guidelines, even if they have different approaches, they all rely, uh, they, are, they are all based on the VGs, I mean, on the VGGT. So the principles and recommendations uh, are most, uh, most of it, most of are the same. And I, sh I see it more as, as a complementarity, because as the guides are developed to talk uh, to different uh, actors, there will be also, it could be also a way to, to cover a large, large range of projects and to help us to, to develop the narratives to, to um, to discuss with the different stakeholders involved uh, within this project. And on top of that, as you know, we are also in a process of, uh, of harmonizing the different, uh, the different uh, guidelines that have been developed uh, among different donors. So it's also something that we are, that we are in the process of, of, of thinking. Mathieu, can you talk a little bit more about this process of harmonizing these guidelines? I think this is something very new and important for our donor community to learn more about it. Um, actually, it started uh, within the framework of the new alliance for uh, food security. And um, we, we started uh, the discussions among donors because we realized that uh, um, almost all of us who were developing uh, guidelines or, or operational guidelines um, to analyze um, land-based uh, land -based agricultural projects or land-based agricultural investments. Uh, but we were not sure um, on how to coordinate our actions. So we decided, uh, and also there was a requirement from the leadership council on, on the New Islands, to develop uh, an harmonized uh, guideline among donors to specifically for New Alliance projects. And now, we, we're going to have a workshop uh, next week to develop uh, an analytical, analytical grid uh, based on, on different principles and that we're going to um, provide to, to the new alliance. Besides the development of these guidelines, what other actions specifically requiring donor coordination would, would it be important to ensure responsible agricultural investments in host countries? For us, as the French cooperation, I mean, French, uh, MOFA, and then AFD, responsible investment raised two different questions. The, first of all, the inclusiveness of these agricultural investments, and that's, that's why, I mean, that's what exactly the, the guide is all about. And the second question is on long governance frameworks and policies that provide secure land for local populations. Because you can ask uh, the private sector to apply different guides and to respect different mm -hmm. principles, if they, if they respect this principle in a, in a governance framework, a land governance framework that doesn't work, it's not going to resolve the problem. So we do have to think, uh, I mean, to think about answers of these two questions at the same time. And uh, one particular aspect um, on which donor coordination can, can improve to, uh, that is, is maybe on this, to, to, to think the problem more globally. And so it, it, can, it can be done uh, by uh, promoting uh, multi-stakeholder governance platforms. And uh, as already, uh, already said as well, uh, the promotion of long expert networks in different countries is also a key, key aspect of, of the law coordination and to also improve long governance in different countries. Mathieu Aurélie, thank you for doing this interview with us.